Well, welcome, everybody. I'm joined today by Gabriel Rutten, MD. Uh, Gabriel is, is the uh, director of our Gary Craig Official EFT Training Center in Holland. Um, and she has a very useful um, way to find core issues. We're going to talk first about the way we typically find them. That is, we go back to the origin of things and the farther back our specific events are, the better. But then we're going to, after that, I'm going to turn it over to her and you're going to find another avenue still having to do with daily triggers. Let me bring her on. There you are. Gabrielle, say hello. Hi, Gary. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Hi. So let's go back to this, this rather standard thing we do within our optimal EFT course. And that is to, we always want to get to the emotional causes of things and we get to specific events and all of that. But the further back we go, the more foundational. Yes? No? Give me your thoughts. Absolutely. Absolutely. Early childhood is very important. Very important. Yeah. Yes. So, and to me, and I spend quite a bit of time on this, you know, it isn't, it's, it's important what happens. Yes, yes. But it's also important what that means to people about themselves. They are abused by, by their mother, for example, or beaten by their father. So these things sometimes, unfortunately, occur. And while there are traumas involved in that, oftentimes there is a thing like, I'm not good enough. The child buys that belief. There's something wrong with me. I'm not lovable. I don't count. I'm invisible, and so on. And those things carry on through life, yes, and cause all kinds of stuff. That Absolutely, was a yes. That, yeah. that was a... So negative core belief, the, the foundation is, is built, so to speak, in the first seven years of your life, including the time in the womb. So everything and every you know circumstance that plays a role and is stressful for you there helps you come to this negative conclusion of I'm not good enough, I'm not lovable, I shouldn't be here, I'm not wanted, I'm yeah. not seen... Uh, my my needs are not important. Stuff like that. Absolutely. So we create. Our, our way of going about this is now we go, let's go back and remember some of these things. Specific events. We have a way to do that. You know, we even have a sentence you can plug your specific event into to form it correctly. But the further back you go, typically, the better. Um, but that process as successful as it has been has one possible flaw in it and that is we don't always remember everything that happened and some things we would just re repress and don't even want to remember and so on and you have found a way by using more current that's what i'm going to call them specific events you call them daily triggers that ends up sometimes showing you stuff that you've completely forgotten and is essential. I'm going, to hand, I'm going to put that in your lap, Gabrielle. Talk about that a bit, would you? Yes. Yes. So absolutely uh, agreed on, on going back as far as possible because you need to get at the foundational stuff where the stress pattern, as I call it, starts. Absolutely. However, you have more than one stress pattern. Most people have hundreds of them. And the contents are rather specific. And so if you have chronic problems in the sense that either psychological or physical, doesn't matter, if there's stuff that is bothering you today, and especially, you know, uh, pay attention to your physical ailments. If something is bothering you today, there's ailments or symptoms today, then that means that something is keeping a stress pattern going. It started way back there, you know, way back in your early childhood, but some thing is keeping it alive and you're still reacting. And so especially physical symptoms quite often are pointers to, you know, stuff you've forgotten, uh, subconscious stuff, stuff you don't even realize. It's conflict, it's emotional content that you're not really aware of. And so here's the thing. Um, what I would like, what I always like to do, is point out, uh, use 
your meditation with unseen therapist on your worst moment of the day. So pay attention to your day and see what your worst moment is. Now, some people readily have can identify moments that are, you know, really stressful or upsetting, eight, seven, eight, nine. But people that have worked a lot might just, you know, have really reasonably uh, easy going days, so to speak. And so it, it might be minor irritations, minor angers, minor sadness, things or whatever else. However, here's the thing. If you use your daily worst moment of my day moment, treat it as a specific event. Really get into it. Associate, really feel what you're feeling in these moments. Don't think, do not analyze. Just relive the moment as if you're in the moment. If it was this morning, again, relive it as if it's right now. Work with unseen therapist until all the intensity, all the charge of whatever emotions and feelings you have is under five. And then either during the association, ask yourself, when did I feel like this before in my life? Mm -hmm. Or ask unseen therapist in the next meditation to point this out for you, whatever you prefer. And, you know, what happens then is the very first memory that comes up is relevant. That might be something you have already worked on. Quite often, it's something you have not, not thought of yet. It might not even be in the lists, you know, in, in the lists you make your specific events of your early childhood stuff, because it might be hidden under other stuff. You might just, if you look at it, you know, without association, you might think, well, this goes in this little box with my problems with at school and this one goes in the box my problems with my mother however if you use the current moment as entry point to your surprise you might find that even though you thought oh this has got definitely got to do with my mother you might end up in school stuff and vice versa it's just an example so this is a very interesting way and a very successful one i might add because this is what i've been doing lately quite a lot with people that say you know, I'm I'm getting results, but I'm still having, you know, symptom X, Y, Z or whatever else. I'm still not there yet. And then we start working like this. So yeah. sort of turn it around. Why don't we again? Don't we, I'm sorry, go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead. No, no I, I was going to say you will end up in early stuff, but it's a different selection. And it's quite, you know, it's really on target because you your your starting point is today whatever is upsetting you today or is giving you a little stress if it's very mild which means that whatever pops up is really on target in terms of this stress pattern that you want to address today because this is what shows up okay and some of the things that show up may be things you had forgotten once upon a time and it's just unseen therapist letting you know definitely what I, th I think would be useful if we can do it here, um, would you have a, an example of this? Now, let, let me just propose one and let you and I talk it through a little bit, if we could. Okay. Let's suppose the worst part of someone's day today, uh, even repeats once in a while, because there's some, somebody in the workplace, we'll call her Susie, who you really don't like. Somehow or other, her gestures, her way of being, her, her comments and yeah, you know, just really get to you. And there you were by the water cooler today, worst part of your day, overhearing her gossip about you. <laughs> okay. And you are mad about that. Yay. So now we have a daily trigger, do we not? Okay. Oh yeah. And yes. one of the things that comes to me anyway about that is well, okay, what is it about Susie? That reminds me, my way of thinking, way back in the past. What is it bouncing off of? What are her, are her gestures like her brother, her mother, her aunt, her teacher, or, or somebody back there, or, a religious leader or something like that, that really gets to her? What back there is it bouncing off of? What does that remind you of? That's my way of going there. But. You're telling me, I think, and expand on this if you would, this Susie thing has got much more in it. Yes? Exactly. 
Yes, yes. And I've also noticed that even though this is a very good way of looking at why is she such a problem for me, you might find very relevant stuff in uh, from your early childhood and, 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 and in between, so to speak. However, I do find that quite a few people stop with anal analyzing this. Whereas I emphasize, if you don't do the analysis, just close your eyes, relive this moment, because then it will unfold in another way, because you will just relive the moment, work on all the emotions. And when all the intensity is under five, when you, if you then ask yourself or unseen therapist, please point out, where do I need to go back to? You might end up in something you have not thought of uh, in any of the other approaches. Yes. The reason yeah. being is because our mind tends to like to generalize and and you know come to general conclusions. And of course, we understand that if your relationship with either your mother or your father or whoever else was important in your early childhood, if that was problematic, we understand that that is foundational in stuff that you're still experiencing today. Um, However, if you allow yourself to really relive the feelings, you might end up in something else because those, this whole storing of details of stuff that happened to you, where all the situations where your stress reaction has been really activated in the course of your life, all these details get stored in your long-term memory. And so, even though the starting point of the stress burden is early childhood, you know, it's maybe not one track and there might be like little side branches where other aspects are very important and you won't address them if you only do, do the uh, early childhood stuff because every experience is a learning experience and we store all these experiences in our long-term long memory. And this is the reason why it's good to also turn it around and make a, the daily trigger your starting point. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So um, that doesn't mean we ignore, you know, the foundational stuff. It means it's another, to me anyway, it's, a, it's another way to go about it. In fact, in fact, your daily stuff is much easier to find because it just happened. <laughs> exactly. you know? And there it is. Exactly. And it's got all this built into it. Yes. It takes a little skill, you know, to do what you're talking about to, you know, rely on the unseen therapist and she's going to give you some messages and, and all of that. But it is a, it is a, as you say, an entry point into lots of other things that can unfold other than relying on your own memory to go find the big one. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Because that is, uh, that needs to be done too. So I'm not saying don't do the, uh, all the other stuff. I'm, I'm just proposing add this to your little sure. toolbox, right. so to speak. Um, again, I just want to emphasize again that if you have something chronic, and for me, chronic is more than two weeks. If you have not, if you have headaches, belly aches, physical problems, I don't care what you have, then daily triggers are playing a role in this. And so it makes sense to make that your starting point because it will bring you back more precisely. I'm repeating myself, I realize, back to you know, key moments that sure. you might not have covered otherwise. All right. Very nice. Very nice, Gabriel. Anything more you want to mention before we sign off? No, no. I think that's it. And uh... All right. All right. Wonderful. I thank you again for your repeated contributions to our wisdom. Okay. This is yet another one. All right. Okay, everybody. We'll, we'll see you next time. <laughs>